I, I do. I do think he genuinely felt bad because, you know, Ben is not a bad person. He's mm -hmm. not a bad nice guy, guy at all. He's just, under a lot of yeah. stress. It's, it's really yeah, stressful just, doing yeah. this. Is that? Well, I guess we have to take it and assume that that's the apology Ben is going to get, that he's not a mean-spirited person and that's the best Morgan can do because no one seems to hold her accountable for her actions despite what we saw for weeks and weeks and weeks. Hey there, it's your girl Valerie again. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight, season 15, um, The Reunion, part one. Um, I don't know. Okay. So they started off with the group. Everyone sat around, all the couples sat around and sort of having a conversation and a catch up. And you could tell right off the jump, I I think um, Justin saw how he was portrayed and didn't like how he was portrayed. And he came with all the smoke and was ready for whoever came after him. So they had a conversation in the group sort of with um, Kevin asking, how is everybody, um, how, is everybody getting along? Has anyone unfollowed anyone? And people sort of looked around and you could tell something had happened. And so Nate spoke up and said, you know, um, Justin unfollowed everybody. And I don't know why. I'm curious to know why. And Justin was, well, um, he was making stupid excuses. I think he didn't expect to be called out right off the jump. And because he was called out, that's why he decided to insinuate that Nate made a pass at him. So when he said he made a pass at him, I think all of us, when we saw the promo, were taken aback that... What does it mean? Nate was all over his wife. It's not like Nate was acting distant unless he's saying Nate is bisexual. Anyway, turns out Nate complimented him twice and told him, oh, you're a good looking guy. Why are you on the show? This is something that everybody would ask anyone that you see on Married at First Sight. And for him to take that and assume that's a pass at him, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked because it's like, um, if you see somebody dressed very well, it's only human to say, oh, you look amazing. Because obviously that will sort of boost, you know, their morale, their ego, whatever you want to call it. And so then I think Justin was playing up for the cameras. He wanted to show that he's all man because Alexis had spent all season sort of uh, mocking him about his thrust game, mocking him about not lasting a long time, not knowing what to do. And I think this was his one opportunity to show that he was man enough. And so he decided to take it out on Nate. I think because in my in my own point of view, I think Nate is the type of guy that Justin wishes he was in the fact that he wishes he had had, you know, such a, you know, so crazy, romantic, emotionally charged sexual attraction to his wife or maybe he wishes his wife had spoken highly of him or I don't quite get it because when it then came around, why did you not speak to Kristen? Oh, she's two-faced, she this, this. And it's like... Who are you to judge how everybody else behaves? So unless people behave the way you want them to behave, then it's an issue with you. That doesn't make sense. He unfollowed uh, Morgan and Lindy because he was supposed to go for a walk with them and they didn't go with, and they went without him. So that's what, and it's like, why are you so childish? This is why Nate was calling him childish. He is really childish because it's unacceptable the stupid stuff he was bringing up as his reasons for not following anyone. And I don't see what the big deal is about people following you on social media anyway. But they... Anyway. So then um, Kevin got the couples to come round and they had a conversation with the couples. One by one, they started off with Lindy and Miguel. Lindy and Miguel, I always had high hopes. In all my reviews, I always said they are one of... They are most likely going to be one of the most successful couples. And I was worried when they fell uh, fell apart because they hadn't had, you know, the challenges that all the other couples were given. They were given baby McKinley. They seem very happy. They seem very much in love. I think they're now relaxed because there's no scheduled filming. They're doing things at their own pace. They've moved into their own home together. Um, Lindy's renovating the apartment to make it feel more like a home. Miguel is happy with that. And the fact that Miguel, uh, Lindy has taken Miguel's say surname and hyphenated with her surname and so it seems they are learning and I think because the pressure's been released of waiting for a for a decision day they seem very happy they seem very content they seem very in love even their body language you can tell and even when the chaos was happening between Justin and and Nate 
they just sat in their corner and just minded their own business. So I like the fact that they're growing. They've got a plan of what they want to do. Their plan is to buy a home, live in their home for a year, and then start having a family. And it's like, oh my God. And it was nice to see because I think when the show started, everybody was very anxious about Miguel's geeky side and whether Lindy would be able to cope with that. And she seems happy with it. She actually, she actually stated that they're playing... um. Dungeons and Dragons once a week. So I am happy for them. They do seem to have a plan in place and they do seem to be working on their marriage and doing great at it. So I wish them all the best. Uh, from there we went to Stacia and Nate. Stacia and Nate for me. I think Stacia and Nate, I like them because unlike the couple from last season, I've forgotten their names, who were living in separate homes, they... I understand where Nate comes from because they had a conversation with Kevin and it turns out Nate says still kept his apartment. He had eight months on the lease to go. And so they're sort of moving. It's not like one is living in one house rather than the other house. No, they're spending a couple of weeks in Stasia's home and then a couple of weeks in Nate's home, which I think is just a security for Nate because I think his biggest worry was the fact that if he moves in with Stasia and then Stasia kicks him out, they break up what happens to him he has nowhere to go so i think that security and the year that is taking for them to sort of get to know each other work on the problems that they have and resolve their issues that will allow him to move in freely when the lease runs out and they can sort of progress as a couple yeah they still do have issues that they're working on they're still working on the fact that stasia this is i think going to be an ongoing problem whereby stasia is used to being in charge and she always wants to be in charge and Nate wants a 50-50 relationship and I think this is something they will need to continue to go into couples therapy form and the fact that they're able to speak and articulate themselves I think is one of their greatest assets. They have the same asset that Miguel and Lindy have in their ability to articulate the issue and sort of try and work on how do we fix the problem. Um, There is the issue about children. Nate is sort of I understand where Nate is coming from. I understand where Stasia is coming from. Stasia is thinking, I'm getting older. I need to have children before, you know, things, it becomes impossible for me. And I also understand where Nate is coming from in the sense that he wants to make sure that their relationship is stable before they can bring a child in. So I think they need to give each other a year, see where they are in the year. And then if they decide to move forward with having children, they can do that. But I can see a future for them. And I like the fact that they were able to address their issues. Yes, there's still a lot of things that they're working on. I think the main issue is the fact that um, Stasia is struggling to relinquish control and realize that she's now in a partnership and it's not just her on her own. But I think if she can sort of understand that and sort of make the necessary shift, they can. They will continue to progress. So it's nice to see that they have two happy couples come out of this season. Um, And then they had Mitch and Kristen. Mitch and Kristen for me... I think Mitch doesn't get enough credit. I think Mitch doesn't get enough credit. I like the fact that he was honest about his feelings. Yes, he wasn't tactful with the way he expressed himself, but he was honest about his feelings. And he took responsibility once he understood what he had done wrong and he apologized for it. And the fact that even throughout, once he realized that he was very wrong at the start of his marriage, he kept apologizing up until the reunion. He was still apologizing for that fact. They had a conversation about the um sort of Alexis trying to ask him what happened, why are you still going to are you still interested in possibly having a romantic relationship with Kristen? And I think people need to stop speaking on other people's behalf. I think yes, she is Alexis is friends with Kristen, but that was not her place to ask Mitch. I think she should have allowed Kristen and Mitch to have a conversation on their own, at their own pace. I think as I said in my previous reviews, uh, Kristen should have allowed Mitch at least a week, as he asked for, to decompress. And then after he decompressed, then come back and sort of had a conversation with him. Where do you see us? What is our way forward? Do you still see yourself having any romantic feelings for me? If not, let me know. And I think Mitch sort of hinted that he, romantically, yes, he does have feelings for Kristen. He's not saying that she's not a beautiful girl, but I think because of the damage that's been caused by their past, how their marriage started, this is why he feels 
that they can never have anything past what they already have. If they have a friendship, that's the most they can have. And so I think they have a friendship. I think they're getting along great. I just think that Kristen needs to be honest with Mitch and she needs to stop setting these boundaries or these goals for him that he will never be able to achieve. She needs to understand that he does come with challenges and it's up to her whether she's willing to accept him with his challenges or leave him alone. From there, we went to um, Ben and Morgan. Ben and Morgan, for me, are a couple that... I really like Ben, and I still do like Ben. I think Ben is an amazing guy who sadly was matched to the wrong person. And I am furious at the fact that Kevin didn't ask um, Morgan to apologize. The best we got was her saying, oh, you know, Ben is not a malicious person. But that's not an apology. If Ben can take you out for a meal and apologize, the least you owe him is an apology back. That I'm sorry about the way I spoke to you at times. It was uncalled for. It was disrespectful. It was patronizing. I wish you would forgive me for that and give a, an at least. Yes, they say they are friends now uh, because I understand Ben took her Morgan out for a meal and apologized. And Morgan was like, "Oh, he wasn't regurgitating every uh, what people were telling him. He really appeared very apologetic." So I accept his apology, and Kevin was like. Yeah, but he's apologized so many times before that. Well, he was regurgitating what people were telling him. And it's like, but even if he was regurgitating what people were telling him, how many times did you apologize? And I think I sort of picked up why she was very sensitive about being calling, saying she wasn't a nurse. Apparently, she's only been a nurse for three years. So that's why she's still so hyped about being a nurse. Otherwise, you know, give her a couple of years and the challenges of nursing and... She won't be as hyped as she was. And I think this is why it was such a big deal to her that Mog, that Ben acknowledged that. She kept saying, oh, he, he betrayed me, he betrayed me. Ben did not betray Morgan. Morgan lied and she wanted Ben to c continue with her lie. And when he didn't continue with her lie, she got upset and decided to use that against him. I think Ben came in naive into this experiment, but I don't think he's as responsible for their demise of their marriage as Morgan is. I think Morgan is more responsible than Ben, but hey, I digress. Here we go to Alexis and Justin. Alexis and Justin are just training a couple. They remind me of Zach and Michaela. Why? I don't know why. Um, so they started off having a conversation and I think Justin is a very malicious person in the sense that if you say or do anything that hurts you, then he has to go below the belt. Because they started talking and were asked, you know, did you consummate your marriage during the honeymoon I heard? And it was, um, he looked at Alexis and Alexis said, you know, it's your business to tell. And she said, well, yes, we did. We, we did the first day and then we did the third day and it was amazing and uh, we made love. And Alexis was like, nah, we didn't. And she's good at embarrassing him about that. And he was like, oh, yes, we did. You orgasmed. And you could tell on Kevin's face, he was just like, oh, my God. Does he not know that at times women will fake an orgasm just to make a guy feel good about himself? And so then he was going on about, oh, you orgasmed, I orgasmed. So, and there was penetration. And it's like, just because there was penetration doesn't mean it was great. That doesn't mean it was great. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. He started going below the belt. And it's I, I don't know with Justin. It's, it's going to continue next week. But with Justin, I think Justin was too immature for the experiment. Yes, he's, his years might say he's older. His height might say he's a grown person. But I think deep down he's still a little boy. And I think this is what his, bro his brother was questioning as to why are you getting married? Because I think his brother knew that he wasn't ready for marriage. But anyway, I digress. Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Bye everyone.